Welcome to the Microsoft IT Pro Podcast, a show about Office 365, Azure, and the IT Pro and end user side of life. Each week, we'll discuss a different topic or recent news related to Office 365 and Azure and how it relates to you as an IT Pro. The MS IT Pro Podcast is never longer than 30 minutes, so let's get started. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Scott. How are you doing today? I'm super excited. We have our first guest today. I know. It should be good. We have our first guest, and our first guest actually called me out for an error in one of my statements on a past podcast, too. We invite him on the show, and the first thing he does is call out errors. Yeah, well, at least he only does it in email, so no one has to see it. So I'm, I'm actually I'm super excited. We've got Matt McDermott today. And we're going to talk a little bit about hybrid. You want to hop in here, Matt? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Give everybody the quick elevator pitch. I'm a SharePoint MVP, Office Servers and Services MVP, and I'm a consultant for a company called Aptalon. With uh, four friends of mine, we do Office 365 consulting. I also teach, and so I've been teaching SharePoint administration for about six years now, seven years now, I guess I started in 2010. And I've recently released a new hybrid class, and it's a three-day hands-on instructor-led course through uh, Mindsharp and Combined Knowledge. I'll send you guys some links, so you have a link in the show notes for this. But um, it's a real fun class. You get nine modules on how to do hybrid stuff, and so I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it here. Very cool. Awesome. So with nine modules for hybrid stuff... There's got to be some pretty important stuff in there, right, to come across three days. So why should people care about hybrid, particularly in the context of things like SharePoint and Office 365? Probably the biggest reason to care about hybrid is it gives you an opportunity to dip your toe in the water if your company is super cautious and afraid of Office 365 in the cloud, or maybe they're not really taking advantage of Office 365. They have the licenses and they've migrated email, so we're in the cloud, but they have a huge SharePoint investment on-prem. Hybrid gives them an opportunity to move stepwise into the cloud. So for instance, probably one of the easiest workloads to get there is uh, OneDrive for Business. So get rid of all your personal sites in your on-prem environment and host them in Office 365. And so what Microsoft has done through just some astounding programming capabilities is give us a bunch of different workloads that we can choose to run on-prem, in the cloud, or both. And that's really what the hybrid story is about, is giving you an opportunity to take advantage of the power of Office 365 and the the power of the services that are available in the cloud, but still maintain an on-prem footprint for your SharePoint environment. For all that truly important stuff, right? Well, I think that companies that are concerned about their intellectual property, losing control of their property, and still want to have certain stuff on-prem, Hybrid gives them an opportunity to say, you know, the lower level, like the, the stuff that doesn't really matter, the medium business impact stuff that we could have in an Office 365 tenant, let's push that stuff up there and let's keep everything else private here. Like, let's say you're doing uh, mergers and acquisitions and that's the thing that you want to keep local. How about instead of having 700 site collections, how about just having one site collection local and putting all the rest of your sites up in Office 365? And that's what um, this hybrid capability allows you to do. So there's reducing the footprint of your servers on-prem, taking advantage of the portability, if you will, of Office 365. If I've got my sites in Office 365, I don't have to worry about that my marketing department is everybody's using an iPhone or an Android phone to access my sites. And they're complaining about how the on-prem sites, they can't get to them or they're hard to see on a phone. I can take advantage of what Microsoft is doing in terms of responsive design and uh, mobility with their apps because I can host those sites in Office 365. And so really what you're able to take advantage of is the cloud features, the mobile-first capabilities of Office 365 while maintaining an on-prem footprint. Yeah, one thing you mentioned too that I really like is the OneDrive for business. You mentioned it's nice and easy. The other thing I like about it is they give you all that space, one terabyte or even unlimited in some plans. 
I don't like one terabyte content databases on my environment, so I love shoving that one up and letting Microsoft have to deal with it. Yeah, that's that massive scale. There's also other workloads that you can take advantage of. So for instance, search is one of my favorite topics to talk about. And hybrid search offers such a great opportunity for companies to simplify their search architecture because with hybrid search, you're allowing Office 365 to do all your content processing. You're allowing Office 365 to store your index. So all you have to run on-prem are your crawlers. So you could take a, I have a client right now that we're taking them from a 12 server SharePoint 2013 installation and we're taking four or six of those servers out of commission because we don't need to support search anymore. All we have to support is crawl. So by changing the way that the farm is scaled, we're able to reduce the server footprint, but also they don't have to patch 10 servers anymore. They don't have to maintain the service packs and the CUs for 10 servers anymore. They don't have to coalesce the ULS logs for 10 servers. Are you flinching yet, Scott? Are you twitching? (laughs) (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) So the idea is to take advantage of that. Plus, once we've got an index in Office 365, we now get all of the advantage of the, co- of the services like Delve. So once the content is in Office 365 in an index there, we're able to take advantage of these improved services and the scale that we get from Office 365. Yeah, I think all that stuff's really awesome. And it really changes the way it used to be to what it is today. So when I think about things like hybrid with SharePoint or Office 365, it very much used to be a story of bring your data to us and then we'll do some cool things with it, but we have to control your data, right? So in that case of something like Delve, well, I had to have all my documents from my environment loaded into OneDrive or SharePoint Online. I couldn't leave them in SharePoint on-prem. But in today's world with things like cloud SSAs, you do gain that operational control between things like uh, whether it's search, hybrid identity. You even have options, I believe, for taxonomy now in SharePoint 2016 to bring some things across on that side. So uh, if anybody hasn't looked at hybrid in a few years because they thought, this isn't for me, Microsoft wants to take control of my data, the hybrid story is really one of those high-level pie in the sky, you can have your cake and eat it too kind of things today. I totally agree. And I'll say... You said haven't seen it in a few years. If you haven't seen it in three weeks, you need to look at it. <laughs> One of the challenges. Well, I think if you're stuck, you know, back in, if you're still doing SharePoint 2007 or SharePoint 2010 and you're looking at making those investments and moving up, there's a bunch of other stuff to look at outside of, hey, I've got a platform upgrade or product upgrade on the back end, right? You're going to have a lot more considerations, particularly with the way Microsoft licenses this stuff through to you. Oh, that's true. No, I, I completely agree. But th- what I was teasing about was the, uh, the notion that even six months ago, the number of workloads in hybrid was significantly less. One of the challenges of writing a course for Office 365, and actually I've gotten together with the documentation folks, the user assistance folks at Microsoft, and asked them this very question. I said, how do you keep, when you have an evergreen product, how do you keep your content not just up to date, but current? So for instance, guidance that you may have given somebody with a screenshot three weeks ago is now different today because there's some new bit of that feature. I was teaching this course as a workshop, and (laughs) I went through the slides and talked about, in this case, I was talking about hybrid taxonomy, which is something I'm really excited about. I went through the slides and showed them what it was, what the hybrid onboarding experience was like for hybrid taxonomy. And, and in this case, um, hybrid taxonomy is essentially managed metadata for your on-prem environment that is served by Office 365. And so there's a synchronization that runs that keeps your term store from Office 365 in sync with your on-prem environment. The advantage of this is a global taxonomy store. So the big thing that I try to get people to understand about hybrid and why I'm so excited is it's not Office 365 and my one on-prem SharePoint farm. It's one Office 365 tenant and my 10 internationally located farms and being able to serve these, uh, have a single source of the truth, in this case taxonomy, but serve those 
term stores down to my 10 farms. So now when somebody says this office is located in Austin, Texas, that same globally unique ID that identifies the term for Austin, Texas is the exact same ID that's being used in all 11 places, my 10 on-prem farms and Office 365. So when I do a search and I search for items that are tagged with the office location of Austin, I get it from my entire environment across every farm, all content, because that unique ID is the same. So I'm giving this demo and I'm running through the hybrid picker, the current hybrid picker, knowing that the screenshot that I took was three weeks old. And there's a grayed out box that says content types. So while I'm doing my live <laughs> demo, I'm seeing, oh, they just, in the last three weeks, they added the feature and it was grayed out so you couldn't choose it yet, but they stubbed out the user interface in the hybrid picker to add the feature for content types, which means I have to go back to my slides that say it doesn't include content types and add it may include content types in the future. And probably if I went and did it now, it probably includes content types. So these features are rolling out and constantly being improved. The hybrid experience um, in terms of picking and being able to configure the experience is constantly being improved to the point that when the hybrid picker, when you download the hybrid picker from Office 365, it's a click once install. You actually, when you go to configure these things from your SharePoint farm, from a machine in your SharePoint farm, and of course most of us are on the central admin box, you click the hybrid picker and it performs the click once install onto your SharePoint farm so that you can do exchange the certificates and establish the trust relationship with your tenants. And it makes that process of onboarding your farm very simple. And then you go through and choose the workloads that you want. And once you've done that, you're able to begin this hybrid experience. And that's what's so cool about it is that if you have a single tenant and you have no beta tenant, you have no uh, like dev tenant to connect a dev farm to, you could still simply stand up a 30-day trial, stand up a virtual machine, and then establish that connection. So you can test out these features in a sandbox if you want, and then just let the trial tenant die while you're making the corporate decisions on which features and which workloads. You can also choose to roll out these workloads over the course of several months as your company becomes more familiar with Office 365 and SharePoint and makes decisions around governance and around how they're going to manage these features and who's going to create what where. That's really awesome. That sounds very powerful. So one question I have in all of this is, obviously, if you're doing hybrid, it depends on your on-prem farm, it depends on Office 365, it depends on this hybrid picker. As they're rolling out features, what do I need to update to see some of these new hybrid features? Can I do it on SharePoint 2013? Do I have to apply cumulative updates? Do I have to be on SharePoint 2016? What are some of those things around deploying these new hybrid workloads that I should be aware of when it comes to those different environments. So I find that folks that want to go hybrid, they really need to understand the what I call the deal breakers. And so you and Scott have done a great job about talking about the first one, which is identity. You must have a solid user synchronization identity story to make sure that you're prepared for all of the rest of the workloads. And so getting... Azure Active Directory synchronization working, making sure that the identities are working seamlessly so that your users can move easily from their on-prem environments to Office 365 and back again. And I say it that way because one of the cool features that's released recently is the hybrid app launcher, which means that you can have links in your on-prem SharePoint waffle to take you directly to your sites in Office 365. And if your end users have to log in again to get to that experience, it's just awful. The second reason for managing the identities is search. Search relies heavily on correct identity management to be able to know what content to show you in the search results. And if you don't have that stuff nailed, it can be a really poor experience for your users. Then there's other things like um, your infrastructure. There are bandwidth calculators that I know you and Scott have talked about 
that help you understand if we go to hybrid, how much of our corporate bandwidth, our outbound bandwidth is going to be consumed by these new features and capabilities. Because suddenly, instead of using just our internal network, we are now going out over the, over the internet to get to these assets. And then we're downloading the, the, the documents or we're previewing the documents. And so suddenly you're going to be using a lot more of your outbound bandwidth. The other side of it would be governance. You need to have a level of governance so that folks understand what products or what goes where, particularly if you're going to be in a hybrid environment where you have a high business impact documentation that needs to stay on-prem versus medium and low business impact documentation that could go in Office 365. But Ben, you asked me about patch levels. And being a SharePoint consultant, I have to tell you, it depends. <laughs> All right, good answer. So if you're using SharePoint 2016, almost all of the features that for hybrid are present in the RTM bits of SharePoint 2016 with the exception of uh, hybrid taxonomy and auditing. So hybrid taxonomy and auditing were introduced in Feature Pack 1, which is also known as the November CU for 2016. But all the rest of it is uh, is included. And actually, we should talk about kind of the what I consider the marketing hype of some of these hybrid features. But for SharePoint 2013, it wildly depends. And so there's some really good documentation online that outlines the different uh, workloads by service pack. But essentially for things like hybrid search, uh, you should be up to like the January CUs. For the hybrid app launcher, that's the July 2016 public update. And then there's one feature that currently is only available for SharePoint 2013. It's not available for SharePoint 2016, and that's hybrid self-service site creation, which is the opportunity to, if you allow your users to create their own site collections or sites, it's the opportunity to be able to give them an experience where they can choose, does it go to Office 365 or does it stay on-prem? Or you can customize that experience so that your end users answer a couple of questions and then they're either routed up to Office 365 to create their sites or down to uh, their on-prem environment. And that was introduced in the March 2017 public update. So like I said, lots to remember, but um, I don't really worry about it with my 2016 environments. But for 2013, depending on which environment or which uh, feature and workload you want to have, there are different public updates available for those. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I'm guessing some of this also requires some planning. But before we jump into kind of what do we need to think about? What type of planning? Let's take a quick break. We'll get a word in from Bitwizards, our sponsor, and we will be right back. You love technology, so do we. You're an experienced IT pro. We respect that. You're a problem solver. We've got clients. You need a tan. We've got a beach. You love Azure. We love Azure. At Bitwizards, we've won Florida Trend Magazine's best companies to work for eight years running and have been a Microsoft Gold Partner since 2001. I don't know about you, but it sounds to me like we were meant for each other. Go to bitwizards.com slash cloudsmith to introduce yourself. All right, so we're back. We got our coffee refills. Um, we heard a word from Bitwizards and let's jump into a couple more. So Matt, what about this marketing hype? Uh, Microsoft talks a lot about hybrid What's up with all this marketing stuff from them? I saw a slide and it had so many different things on it and they called it all hybrid. And it's so funny because some of the stuff that they're saying is hybrid is really features that already exist in SharePoint online, but they're sort of wrapping around. Let me give you an example. B2B extranets. It's really just external sharing. <laughs> it's not really hybrid, but... Extranet is one of the most easiest ones for me to talk to my clients about and say, well, you're supporting, because a, a lot of my clients are supporting a completely separate farm for their Extranet. So they have a completely separate farm. Some of them have forms-based authentication set up for that. And I say, well, how many users are using that? Oh, 12. You know, it's the board of directors. It's the people that are part of the company in terms of being the board of directors, but they're not in the active directory. So they have this SharePoint site set up for them and an entire infrastructure set up for them. Super easy workload to move to Office 365. Is it hybrid? Mm, I, I say no, but that's okay. So you'll see things like that on the marketing slides. You'll also see things like modern attachments, which is really just put a link in, in OneDrive 
into my email instead of actually sending the the attachment. So that's using OneDrive, but is it hybrid? Mm, I kind of have a hard time with that. But there are some other ones that are fun that are super simple, like sites. So hybrid sites is not team sites in Office 365. That's hybrid self-service site creation. Hybrid sites is the sites page. When I do, I'm following a site, even if I do it on-prem, that link goes to Office 365 and it shows up in my SharePoint page, my sites page. I think they're calling it the SharePoint home page now. Even though it's not really your home page, it's just the page in SharePoint that's labeled SharePoint or it's labeled Office 365. It depends on whether it's the modern UI or not. So I know that's confusing. Talk to your users. They're like, okay, whatever, move on. They don't care that it's hybrid. So there's there's just a little bit about that that you have to pay attention to. Some of these workloads are really easy to configure. Other ones take a bit more work. And so I just want you to weed through the marketing hype and decide what your business needs and choose your workload according to your business needs. All right. Yeah, it's really interesting to me. You know, you kind of talked earlier about all this stuff that you have to know, which is really about identifying your business, right? Before you even get into planning. So I need to know what my workloads are. I need to know how my users use it. I need to know the data and the content and what actually is going in, in there. And that can be a an adversarial conversation in some organizations, right? Like, <laughs> tell me how you do your job and what your job is and how you do it and, and all the things that are going to come into that. But, you know, that's all the upfront planning. And sometimes that stuff, you know, one of the key takeaways there is, at least on my side, that's a little bit more meaty sometimes than even here's how we're going to step through an implementation and we're going to run this PowerShell in this order and upload these certificates and bind an environment together. Because ultimately all this stuff is business driven, right? You're going to have a business case and you're going to have a reason you do it outside of spinning up your lab and sending it in. I think that's all great stuff and it keeps everybody grounded too, right? <laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of architecture and things that go into it, but what is your business? What's important to you and what are the workloads that you want to deploy? And then backfill from there. Right, and how do you want to support your users? My users are frustrated because, fill in the blank, they want to access their content, their personal content with their iPhone. Awesome. Hybrid OneDrive. You know, those kinds of things, those kinds of answers. And so when you look at what's hard to implement versus what's easy, hybrid OneDrive and hybrid sites is trivially easy. You have to have an Office 365 tenant you have to have a SharePoint on-prem tenant, uh, SharePoint on-prem environment. You have to click a radio button, fill in a URL, and you're done. I mean, really, it's just that simple. Plus, with, with many of these features like hybrid OneDrive, you can use audiences. So I can say, everybody in my company except the legal department gets their OneDrive in Office 365. And if you're in the legal department, when you click the exact same link that everybody else is clicking, you go to an on-prem OneDrive. So you can decide how do you want to segment these features and how do you want to apportion your two environments, which is really cool. When you look at things that take a little bit more work, a little bit more planning, features like hybrid taxonomy, simply because a lot of companies aren't using the managed metadata service the way they could or the way they should. So understanding what you have from a managed metadata perspective, possibly what you're going to migrate to Office 365, because remember, we're going to pull it down from Office 365. There's a third-party vendor that produces a product that allows you to synchronize both ways and synchronize across farms. But the Office 365 offering is just from Office 365 down to my farm. So if you're going to migrate up, there's a PowerShell commandlet that you can run to migrate or synchronize your taxonomy one time to the cloud. So there's features that are that those take a little bit more planning, not from a implementation perspective or security perspective, but just from using managed metadata. And then I think the one that is that is most complex is search. Not because it's harder to implement but because there's so much you have to think about when you're going to be working with a hybrid search environment. Like, are you going to maintain sites in the cloud as well as sites on-prem? And can you commingle those search results or do they have to stay separate? All of those things have nothing to do with the technology. They have everything to do with company culture and how the, how the lawyers are seeing the way the content is being managed. I've got lawyers from two companies in exactly the same line of business. 
lawyers from company A are telling me, no, 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 we have to have two indexes, one in the cloud and one on-prem. Lawyers in company B who do exactly the same thing are telling me, nope, push everything to Office 365, we're fine. And so what I try to do is I try to get those lawyers to talk to one another because maintaining those two indexes doesn't really serve you. You don't get the benefit of being able to move to Office 365 altogether. You still have to maintain the on-prem architecture, which is kind of a bummer. So one question I had too is I would imagine as you're planning this out when you're doing the hybrid that internet connection between Office 365 and on-prem is obviously very important. With things like hybrid taxonomy, it sounds like all those terms get synced down to your on-prem environment. So if you would lose connection for a period of time, it would still be available. What about things like search where that index is actually in Office 365? If you lose that connection, do things like search just break if users go try to search for something? Yes, they do. Because you think about it, when uh, an end user executes a query, the query is going from the whatever site they're on. So let's say they lose their outbound connection altogether and they're in Office 365. Well, they're not in Office 365 anymore. They're going to get, a, they're going to be have a dead browser. If they're in their on-prem environment in a search center on-prem and they execute a query, the query is going to fail because the outbound connection has been lost for the query services. For crawling, the crawler just fails. And so you'll see errors in your crawl log that it couldn't push the content. But then the next time when you reestablish the connection, the crawler will continue to feed the, the uh, index. It's not batched up or anything like that. You just have to re-execute the crawl. Okay. So we probably have maybe a couple minutes left. Any last things about hybrid you want? users to know? Well, I've got a couple of webinars that I've done and recorded and put them on my YouTube channel. So I urge your listeners, I would love it if folks would subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been doing a a couple of series on search, but I've got two hour-long webcasts. One is kind of an all-up what's up with hybrid that'll bring people up to date as of a couple of months ago on what's current in hybrid, as well as um, a lecture that I've been doing at my conferences recently which is hybrid search and taxonomy together to kind of demonstrate not just the power of hybrid search, but if you add hybrid taxonomy, just what benefit you get from, from these two amazing features working together. And so that's, uh, that's youtube.com slash Abel Blue, A-B-L-E-B-L-U-E. And uh, I'd love folks to, to subscribe there. I've been putting a lot of work in on that. I've got a series of posts right now on how to build out a search solution. And it's about, I think we're up to about three hours of content on how to, on end to end. And so that's what I'm trying to do is go deeper into demos that I'm not able to do during my sessions, during my 75 minute sessions at conferences. Awesome. Sounds good. We'll make sure to definitely link those up in the show notes so people can go check them out. And then lastly, if people want to get in touch with you, have questions, Questions, want to hit you up about something we talked about, what's the best way for them to do that? Probably the best way is through my blog, which is uh, ableblue.com slash blog, or on Twitter. I'm Matthew McD at Twitter. So M-A-T-T-H-E-W-M-C-D on Twitter. Two real easy ways to get a hold of me. All right, awesome. We'll link those up in the show notes as well so people can also access them there. Well, thanks again, Matt. Appreciate having you on. You've taken some time to talk to us all about SharePoint Hybrid this morning. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Not a- I'm your first live guest. That's awesome. You are. We should get you a special award for <laughs> being the first live guest. <laughs> I get a badge. <laughs> send him a sticker. All right, yeah, we'll send you a sticker. We'll send you a podcast sticker with first guest written in Sharpie on it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you next week, Scott. Thanks. If you enjoyed the podcast, go leave us a five-star rating in iTunes. It helps to get the word out so more IT pros can learn about Office 365 and Azure. If you have any questions you want us to address on the show or feedback about the show, feel free to reach out via our website, Twitter, or Facebook. Thanks again for listening and have a great day.